changes, five in all, and uh, most significantly up the order there to that first test match. But nice to have the unit still together. Overcast conditions and uh, both sides of a... In the air, and I don't think it carried. We'll have to check it. Slightly tentative stroke here by Philo Wallace and Johnny Rhodes there in a rather unusual position for him, particularly down here. Okay, well, welcome to Kingsmead. And as you join us, and we apologise for the problems that we've had, more on that in a moment, we've seen the outside edge to the third ball of the second over of the morning, bowled by Sean Pollock. Not quite carry. a wonderful catch if you hit it I thought I heard two noises there was a big a, claim a very hard sound very hard sound indeed end of the over 10 for none well Alan Donald got the length exactly right with that last delivery nice and full nips back off the seam and did it hit a glove or did it just hit the flap of the pad I think that's a pretty good decision Whips this one away for four, just backward of the square leg umpire. It wasn't a good ball from Donald, straying on to about middle and leg. And he picked it up nicely and whipped it away to the vacant square leg boundary. So four runs and the over at 22 for no wicket. This is cracked away to the boundary. Just a little bit short and wide from Tobrooker and uh, Wallace very quickly onto that. Oh, well you could hear the hesitation and you can't blame them for that because Rhodes was uh, in the area and he'd be pretty disappointed Rhodes. Such incredibly high standards. And that brings up the 50. This ball was well pushed away, and you can see the batsman actually stopped waiting to see what happened. But for once, John T. Rhodes wasn't able to cut it off, and uh, Sprinter Simcox belts around behind him in support. And that's the 50. Oh, it's edged and caught at slip. Cullinan takes the catch. Comes as the wicket goes to Cullis. Wallace is out, and it's 50 for one. One drive too many. Yep, that was a loose shot, but that's how the West Indies play. No footwork to speak of. He wasn't really near the line. Thick outside edge, and it went high above Cullinan's head. But those hands don't miss many. And the brilliant bowling change by Hansi Cronier. Cullis gets the first wicket. So Wallace goes for 21, an hour and 16 minutes, 49 balls for three falls. And brings Shivnarin Chandapal to the wicket. Big hundred against the South African A side in Peter Maritzburg, 182. And here's uh, the four man leading run scorer on tour so far. And 33 tests now, averaging 43. Hits a pad, may well have pitched just outside leg stump, but not a bad first one up to Chandapal. Left hander facing, and this line was absolutely superb, and for my money, that was out. It might have pitched outside leg, but if you look at it again, um, I think that probably pitched leg and held its own. Very difficult decision for umpire Orchard to make, Oh, that's a big appeal, and out! No foot movement, and a second wicket 
in consecutive overs and West Indies now 52 for two. David Tabruga gets his first wicket and the second of the innings, it's Junior Murray, LBW for 29. Well, David Tabruga, and quite rightly so, getting the second wicket to fall, Junior Murray, 29, LBW bowled Tabruga. 59 balls, he hadn't hit a boundary in all of that shot, but he did a good job for the West Indies. Brian Lara, a few with better credentials than that. Averaging just over 50. No ball. The no ball. And all sorts happened. Tabruga was appealing for what he thought might have been an LBW. The ball ricocheted into the gully. I think it was caught there by Rhodes. All of which uh, came to naught because it uh, was a no ball. Little step back. But what a fine delivery first up. So David Tabruga putting pressure on this great batsman. And uh, looked as though it might have got an inside edge onto the flap of the pad. That's why it flew so high. Turn the ball just to push down the ground. He comes uh, into this match following his 182 against South Africa at Maritzburg which uh, stretched over three days because of the weather down there, Monday, correction, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. He's in good touch and resuming the position at number three, which he took on first of all in Australia when Brian Lara was having some difficulty against Glenn McGrath. In fact, it was at number three that he scored his first Test 100 against India. Not yet was the call. Raw Lewis. And out. Two wickets for Cullis. Chanderpaul. Maybe I got him out by talking about his 182 and his confidence. But the right foot didn't go very far then, which resulted in an outside edge to wicketkeeper Boucher. Yes, yeah, the most uncharacteristic uh, stroke here from Chanderpaul going after a wide one, angled across him, the right arm bowler over the wicket to the left-hander. Uh, perhaps close enough to the off stump that he might have played, but he didn't get into line, he might well have left it alone. Outside edge, and the West Indies, after their best opening partnership of the series, are now floundering, floundering once more at 57 for three. So who put the, the new man in? Experienced test player. Many will... Uh, say that he's underachieved for the ability that he shows and the class that he shows. Hooper off the mark straight away but he'll have to hurry and brilliantly backed up by Tabruga at mid on. Whipped away by Lara, that is a fantastic shot. Cronier has just brought the man up from back there, Pollock was back there. He just brought him up to save the one, and what a quality stroke that was. And so typical. I think that's the replay of the stroke which carried him past Sir Gary Sober's record in Antigua. Smashed through the covers for four. Bouncer, followed by a full-length de full delivery, and that was Lara's answer. As I was saying, the confrontation between a great fast bowler and a great batsman is always worth watching. And there's that classic cover drive, type of drive that we saw on three or four occasions by Lara at Port Elizabeth. Past the backward point, beats Simcox down at third man and goes for four. This was a good stroke. He didn't hit the middle of the bat, but uh, you always got the feeling that Brian Lara had it under control. You can see there that straight bat, the upright bat, angled away to John T. Rhodes' right. The outfield is quick, particularly down in that area.
This time he pulls and will get four runs. Safe shot on the ground. And those two short deliveries in a row from Alan Donald. Ending is over and uh, pickings for Brian Lara. 87 for three. Goes racing away for four runs. He played one of those shots of Donald's bowling before lunch. It was a magnificent shot, and here he does it again. Margin for error is so small with Brian Lara. This really wasn't a bad delivery, and he just punched it away. Little jump as he does so, and no one anywhere near. Watch the jump there. Boof. Head perfectly placed. Four runs. Carved away by Lara. Well, the attitude hasn't changed. And the banners starting to emerge from the West Indies supporters. But this really was vintage Brian Lara. Onto the back foot very quickly. Chooses the gap. And it wasn't a bad delivery. But it got punished. Now, has he got hold of this one? He has indeed, and that's four runs. So this time, he again goes after the steep, bouncing, short delivery. This time, he brings it off, though, and uh, it's 105 for three. As we watch Brian Lara getting that last ball from Alan Donald away to the boundary. Now, to tell you how Jacques Cullis fares, Gerald de Kock, and with him, Tony Cozier. Thanks, Trevor. There's the scorecard after the initial stand of 50. Always oh, edged at a court. Cullen in again. Cullis the bowler. Hooper goes. And the combination has done it again. The breakthrough after lunch to Jacques Cullis. A loose shot by Hooper. And the West Indies are 105 for four. Well, Carl Hooper won't want to watch this when he gets back into the dressing room. Really a flailing stroke. Look how wide that ball is. There's no way he could have controlled that shot. That was almost a wide and uh, a very naughty shot from Carl Hooper at a crucial stage. He goes, leaves Lara behind and the West Indies at 105 or 4. And what will be a nervous few deliveries first up for Darren Kanga. Oh, he's got that away very fine for four runs. Beautifully glanced fractional line for his first ball, Pollock. very fine indeed and he had to manufacture that shot it's not to say that the angle helped him he's got a right arm bowler over the wicket to him so the angle would have been across him even though Pollock does go close to the stumps and a manufactured shot beautifully played Well, that's well bowled, big appeal, but he's got well forward. Umpire Orchard says not out. That's a good shot. Won't go to the boundary. Cronier. So, three runs. Takes it up to 117 for four. Nicely chimed, that'll be four. It's a good shot from Ganga. First ball after the break, and uh, slightly wide, but a really classy stroke uh, from Darren Ganga. And we've seen this young man ex exuding talent. Put that perfectly timed, good balance and into the gap really looks a class act mm 
It's pulled away by Lara with a lot of power. And it's gone the full distance. And it's taken him to his 50. What else? Unbelievable stroke. He moves to 51 in only 85 balls with this shot. Really wasn't all that short. And you can see he's been looking to dominate all the way through. Pulled it away, but it's in the air. There's the loose stroke. Grandier under it. Well, is it a loose stroke or is it Tabruga's ability just to come under the bat a little bit harder? Well called, Lee Irvin. We talked about that earlier, didn't we? And this one did. Brian Lara is beside himself. He's so angry. He'd made a half century. He was looking awesome. The South Africans are full of joy. And Brian Lara goes for 51. West Indies 133 for five. Well bowled, David Tabruga is again it's high up on the bat that's why it's gone nowhere Lara's on his way out already he knows that Cronier shouldn't drop that he doesn't and Tabruga has got a very very important wicket indeed and doesn't he know it Brian Lara 51 in 91 deliveries West Indies now 133 for five he made his debut at the beginning of this series at the Wanderers not a 42 in that test match to Brugger, to Jacobs. Nicely off the mark, nicely timed. Cronier in pursuit, but he won't get there. So, off the mark, four. And the total on to 137 for five at the end of that over. full delivery all he really had to do was sort of walk into it oh, oh he's put that down full toss but I think it carried we'll have to wait and see 138 for five Jacobs whipped away through mid wicket off about middle stump and four runs very effective that was a fine stroke. It really wasn't a bad delivery coming in at him just short of a length. And uh, Darren Ganga working it away. See here, through there. Look at the flick of the wrists as he worked it away into the gap in the air, but perfectly into the gap. This is through the covers. Good shot. And uh, not even John T. Rhodes' pace will haul that one in. So four very good-looking runs to Ganga. If you wait and you have patience, you're going to get the bad ball. Even the, the best bowlers, and Tabruka is rather inexperienced. And there's the half volley right at the off stump, well put away. And his patience has paid off. Good-looking shot. Brings up the 150 for the West Indies. Ganga's third boundary. Now he swings one away and he's got a big one. Well, would you believe it? Just to confound us, as in we say, he's playing awfully sensibly to the tee break. He has a full go at some cocks, but he brings it off. Just the length, and uh, as we've seen before, he's good on that shot. Under it and picked it up and went all the way. Ganga gets a single here. They might get a second and will for an overthrow. Boucher was trying to back up there, but uh, was thrown very hard, a little bit wildly. Ganga, in the end, ends up with two. Uh, he took on Jonty Rhodes earlier with a similar sort of push shot and would have been run out by a mile if Jonty had hit. But fortunately for him, he missed it. 
He's still got the dirty brown patch on the front of his shirt as a result of the despairing dive. He's on 26 now, though, in his first test match. He's batted very nicely. I still wouldn't rule a run out out of the equation completely. He's just been a little dodgy with his calling. Brilliantly fielded. This time it's not Jonty Rose, but somebody is almost as good, Herschel Gibbs. Tremendous cricket this all round. A little bit of width offered from Donald. Good shot. Good fielding. Slip and not quite a silly point, more silly mid off, I suppose. In close. And this is up in the air. Shouts of catch it, catch it from a frantic. Pat Simcox, but Pollock is not able to get around and underneath that down on the backward square leg boundary. It's one of those ones when it was played, it looked fairly innocuous. And it looked very safe shot, but it's sort of hung up in the air there for a while. And uh, one bounce in the end to Pollock. might be stranded here, yes, oh, a brilliant bit of fielding, and umpire Dave Orchard is going to have to ask the third umpire, Cyril Mitchley, to have a look at this one, John T. Rhodes was so quickly onto that, and turned, and in a flash, threw down the stumps. There's a slide in the middle of the pitch there. Well, that's from the mid-wicket camera. The Panai will uh, give you a slightly different view to that. In fact, not quite so far in, but the decision's been made already by Cyril Mitchley. When we have a look here, from square on, we'll find that he's a lot closer to being out, but uh, still the correct decision. And that's a big one. Loosener from Cronier but uh, his pace a little bit too short or at the pace of this delivery is a loosener as well halfway down and wonderfully dispatched by Ridley Jacobs for six over square leg They take on Jonty or Herschel Gibbs this time. They're going to get overthrows. Hey. Two of them to one of the worst aspects, I think, of cricket. When you throw down the stumps, you should not be penalised with a, a deflection like that. And Herschel Gibbs was very sharp in throwing down the stumps there. And uh, as a result of it, they get two runs. They had to scurry, though still there's a bit of uncertainty in the calling and running between these two otherwise they're doing a pretty useful job now I'll change in commentary and Tony Cozier's with Lee Irvin Thank you, Trevor Sean Pollock from the Old Australia no ball. no ball called the score moves on to 177 as the two, these two young men from the West Indies put together what is certainly a face-saving partnership and uh, that was a long way over as the South African bowlers toil. The ball has got old, 64 overs old in fact and it's certainly got flat as has the pitch. He's put it on! So Sean Pollock strikes a little bit of hard luck for Darren Ganga and his diligent innings has come to an end as he drags it on. He goes for 28, West Indies 178 for 6. Well, just as we were talking about what a useful innings this a partnership this had been, Darren Ganga plays one off the inside edge. Rather unluckily, one thought, and seemed to bounce back onto the...
back of his foot and then onto the off stump but nevertheless good bowling from Sean Pollock Darren Ganga goes for 28 and the West Indies are now 178 for 6 so Lewis comes in certainly batting average nothing to speak of at this stage although it's only his third test match straight to Daryl Cullinan it almost looked as though it might have been a bump ball wasn't he walks and he's gone for a duck so Sansi Grunier full credit to him kept himself on got the wicket that was needed West Indies are 179 for seven just emphasizing the West Indian susceptibility to swing bowling they don't see much of it back home in the Caribbean an outswinger and Raw Lewis going after it he was out in similar fashion in the match against South Africa A, a wide ball swinging further away, no need to go after it, but he did, and he goes for a duck. 179 for seven. सरगम चाय का रंग स्वाद और तुम्हारा हाथ डंकन की सरगम चाय रंग स्वाद और आपका हाथ बनाए एक सुरीली सरगम ये चाय किसने बनाई माँ सरगम और डंकन साधारण फ्रिज में सब्जी रहती है आधी फ्रेश सिर्फ आधी हाँ क्योंकि ठंडा करता है सिर्फ एक तरफ से तो सब्जी रहे एक तरफ से फिट और दूसरी तरफ से Samsung Super Explo. This is a smart fan, which will take you to the corner of the corner. And the vegetables are fit from four sides. Super Explo from Samsung. This is four corners fit. If you go through someone like Session 10, Dilka's record, I think he's got 19 one-day hundreds. He's got 18 at home and only one away from the Asian continent, if you like. So we've got a chance, I think, of getting him out here early with the green decks, and so obviously that's the key. Can the Kiwis stop Sachin? India's tour of New Zealand. The second test continues tonight, live on Star Sports. This cricket broadcast is brought to you by Samsung. Challenge the limits. He's uh, 26 years of age. His test average is 9.7 and... Uh, as Tony says, a top score of 34 versus India. Hasn't quite got to the 100 mark in uh, Test cricket yet. Big responsibility on his shoulders. Though. Got it through. Comfortable two here. So Rose is off the mark. And it completes the over from Kanye, an over in which he's taken the wicket of Lewis, 181 for seven. As I said, he likes to hit the ball. And when he does hit it, he hits it pretty well. So short ball from Kanye at that pace. Really, the short ball is asking for it. And it got it. Well... Certainly most of these West Indian fast bowlers are tall and uh, it takes a very short ball indeed from a man like Hansi Crenier to get it above shoulder height. He certainly he got that one up halfway and paid the price. Caught. Short extra cover placed in there for that. Jack Collis, who has had such a good day with the ball, now takes the catch, and Franklin Rose goes, and the West Indies lose their eighth wicket for 185, and Hansi Cronje has another wicket. Well, well, Hansi Cronje doing an excellent job here. Congratulations to his captain for bringing him on. He gets his second wicket. Franklin Rose goes for six, caught by Collis, and uh, the West Indies 185 
for eight at this stage. Look at this, it's just short of a length. His feet are nowhere. He tries to drive. Tony's just been talking about how he likes to drive, and this one going straight into the chest of Jacques Callas. Falls to cushion the blow, but all smiles, and the West Indies deeper in trouble. The years who have uh, averaged in one, double one. figures in test cricket. Ready, an easy place to aim, and Ambrose is gone. Took a very careful aim, John T. Rhodes. Ambrose had absolutely no price if he hit, and with all that time to aim, there was no way that Rhodes was going to miss. Ambrose goes, and the West Indies slip further into the mire at 186 for nine. Uh, really the aim here for him, not much more than to try and stay with Jacobs so the West Indies can push the score at least uh, above the 200 mark. In the air, and going to drop safe and go for four. Straight back overhead by Jacobs. So he's decided to throw the bat here. He's played very well. He's gone to 37. West Indies up to 191. But as the coaches always tell you, if you're a batsman in your set and number 11 comes into you to join you, it should be the number 11 that gets out, not you. So we'll see what happens here now. Yes, this this was a far better stroke. This is Pollock. And that will be four leg buys because... The batsman was taking evasive action as he tried to jump out of the way and got hit by Sean Pollock. Quick bounce of this. Hit him on the forearm or just above the forearm maybe, above the elbow. Just to see exactly where it hit him, but it had him in an uh, awful state up <laughs> around the shoulder there. It's been a very nice little spell for the South African captain. He's ended up with three, and he has bowled out the West Indies now for under 200. And another very disappointing performance by them. And Ridley Jacobs is the final man to go, having put up uh, one of the better performances on the day for the West Indies. But I suppose with Courtney Walsh at the other end, he felt that um, an expansive stroke was called for at the start of a Hansi Cronier over, and uh, he missed it and uh, has been bowled for 39. There are three slips and two gullies. No third man. Pine leg, of course, is there. And Gary Kirsten immediately off the mark. That's good running. Just spotting that mid-off was quite deep and maybe not right up to it. First ball of the innings, and he just popped it down in front of him and set off. It's in the air and dropped. It's Ganga in the gully. And it's dropped. He's had a go Over at that. His head. And just over his head. Outside edge, show excitement here for the West Indies, but frustration as well. get the feeling though that uh, Ambrose and Walsh are starting to find the right length and that really did get big on Gibbs a little too wide it wasn't behind it and over the top of uh, Murray at third slip I wasn't too sure if it was over the top we'll have a look at it he seemed to pull out of uh, the catch up he goes and then doesn't now this is a fine repost hit that beautifully And 
four despite the attempt of uh, Chandapur. Two boundaries to Gibbs in contrasting style. He's hit that one nicely through the gap on the offside. Good call. And that brings Gary Kirsten his 3,000... 3,000 test run in the third South Africa to do so difficult to say 3,000 death run as he's got away for four anything short and wide and Gary Kirsten's onto it very quickly 31 for no wicket nice to see that Gary Kirsten even though is a relatively short period of time left in the day five overs in fact is prepared to look for the loose ball and to punish it he's now on 11 and, uh, Herschel Gibbs on 19 this is how he played the last shot perfectly into the gap good timing frustration for Kurt Lee Ambrose That's four buys. Dropped it in very short. It climbed so steeply and over the head of a leaping Ridley Jacobs. Bonus runs for South Africa. Captain Brian Laura has to do the fetching. Look how short he dug that one in. Courtney Walsh. Just to give it the old underarm flick. This is why Jonty Rhodes is so valuable in a team. He knows that uh, New Walsh is, hasn't got any arm to speak of. Just takes advantage. Uh, the West Indies concede two runs instead of one. Predominantly offside field. Four saving one in the ring and, and one behind them. There's a backup. And Rhodes. Sort of bunts that really, wide mid on. Again, uh, we saw Cullinan pull Lewis over mid wicket and it just went for four. He didn't find the sweet part of the bat because of the extra bounce and this is almost the same case. Rose manages to just sort of club it, steer, steer it wide mid on. It's in the air for a little while. Gave that a bit more stick. And Kirtley Ambrose looked over to his right as if someone <laughs> else was going to run after it. And in nine strides has hauled it in. <laughs> he was hoping desperately someone was out there. <laughs> no one to help him. And Jonesy Rhodes comfortably gets three. This one's short and pulled away in front of square. That'll be four. Eventually the bowler makes a mistake. And credit to Rhodes. He was up to it. As soon as the error was made, Rhodes punished him. 199 for five. It's a little bit too short. Rhodes very quick on the on his feet and a short man as well, so. It's only got to be a fraction short to give him time to get back and pull it away. It was the leg spinner, wasn't the googly? So South Africa take the lead with five wickets still in hand. In swinging Yorker and Pollock, I think, got a little bit of bat on it. Did he? Let's watch Umpire Orchard. Yes, he has. And that brings up the South African 200, which is richly acclaimed by the crowd here of over 11,000 people.
Very strong onside field for Jonty Rhodes. Three on the boundary. Five for the split with one man in it slip on the offside. That's why. I think he might have brought this one off to perfection. He has indeed. Bisecting the backward square leg and the mid-wicket and getting four. He's hit that very hard, but he's hit it from outside off stump, which allows him, where the ball's pitched, well outside off stump, which allows him to hit it in front of square. And he got such a good contact on it that it, it went for four. It beat the deep backward square leg. I say in front of square, the ball started off in front of square. When the ball's bowled straighter, like that, and that tends to pick the man out, but he's got that fine enough to steal too. He moves on to 46 now. In the air, didn't play that very well. Oh, and Ambrose lets it go by for four. Brings up his 50. And that was very naughty of Kirtley Ambrose. And a uh, very good half century from John T. Rhodes. Back to back 50s now. Second innings in Port Elizabeth. First innings here at Kingsmead. And uh, the fielding down there was something that happens when you first come into the game. Everyone's screaming at you, watch the spin, watch the spin. This is a good looking shot from Jonty Rhodes and he's going to get four runs. It was an excellent shot. He had to give himself just a little bit of room. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't all that short. Pretty full. And Rhodes... Oh. Now Sean Pollock does get on to one. It's a little bit short. And pulls it away for four runs. Hooks it more. It went just back with a square in the end. Yeah, it was the googly. Now, I'm intrigued as to whether Pollock picked it or whether he read it off the pitch. Watch the ball comes out of the back of his hand. Now, is Pollock shaping to hit it on the onside already? I think he was. I think he picked him. He's 13, 61 to Rhodes. I'm sure... Those couple of boundaries might well bring the new ball soon. 236 for five. Beautiful shot by Pollock, and again, a little bit of lazy fielding from Kirtley Ambrose, and it's four runs. This is one of the big differences between these sides, and probably would not have got past the South African fielder. I think half the problem there was that Ambrose was about five meters too close he needn't that ball flies off the new ball flies off the bat and uh, he's got a long way to go down too, the old lad but uh, it wasn't a great effort it wasn't a lot of uh, if you like commitment to it lead now 44 for South Africa John T practicing his Afrikaans third man. No gully, it's just two slips in position. Because even though he's got a new ball, Brian Laura has got to keep the runs down. Gloucestershire. 
100, over 100 wickets in this last season to top the wicket-taking list. And they don't want him anymore, Robin. I believe they, uh, they're saying that they, they're assuming he will be in the West Indian uh, World Cup team and they want somebody for the whole season. Nicely played this by Johnny Rhodes through mid-wicket. Beautiful shot. I think it might just win the race to the boundary. It does. Well, that was a beautifully played stroke. Such good balance. Head so still. And it's fairly raced across the turf for four. Ganga's a very speedy little man and he really raced around that boundary but still couldn't cut it off. Now an appeal for LBW. No, says umpire Tiffin. End of the over. 2.47 for five. Lovely shot down the ground. Trademark shot from Sean Pollock. We've seen that so often in this series. A lovely straight drive with a straight back. Perfectly played. And four runs from the time it left it. What a good shot to bring up the South African 250 and you can see that Sean Pollock really is just concentrating on showing the maker's name to the ball and uh, the hard shiny ball does the rest as soon as he made contact. There's nobody in there straight either at mid on or mid off so uh, he was always in, in with a chance and goes to 23. Even better stroke. This was really, really classy. It won't go all the way because Kirtley Ambrose is going to haul it in. But uh, three runs will accrue. Seven runs in two balls off the tiring and quite justifiably tiring Franklin Rose. He's into his 21st over of the innings. Really does uh, drive the ball well, Sean Pollock. There's a streaky shot from Sean Pollock inside edge. He's going to get two for it. And no matter what the field placing was like, he was always going to get those runs. And you can't set a field for those streaky shots. You can hear him encouraging all the time and saying in Afrikaans that uh, Franklin Rose is getting tired now. Of course, you knew that, Tony, didn't you? I knew he was getting tired. <laughs> so, 259 for five. Fine shot. We've seen him play that shot very well so far that one just a push we've seen the on drive more deliberately and forcefully played what a wonderful catch that is a magnificent catch by Carl Hooper. When it came off the edge, the first reaction was four. How he got there and snatched out of the air at full stretch, well, we'll never know. He took one just like that to dismiss Sachin Tendulkar in the tournament in Bangladesh. What a magnificent grab. Well, we were just talking about Carl Hooper and how unobtrusive he normally is. And Robin Jackman actually said, I wonder that we've never really seen him dive for a ball. Well, certainly this one has made up for all the others where uh, he's taken them so easily. That was out of the top draw. Certainly one of the best slip catches I've ever seen. Sean Pollock goes for 30. Thank you. 
Mark Boucher, the wicketkeeper, comes out to replace Sean Pollock. Franklin Rose just uh, picking up his fourth wicket of the innings with the outswinger. Some advice for Mark Boucher from John T. Rhodes as the wicketkeeper comes in at the fall of the sixth wicket. So this is why he's at the wicket. Look at that, so full pitched, it's almost as though he hit on a bump ball. But look at the distance that Carl Hooper travels now. To, to go that far and then to pick it up one-handed is absolutely amazing. Quite rightly, he's delighted. So that uh, certainly will compensate to some extent for the poor shot he played yesterday to get himself out. And uh, Franklin Rose strikes the game. It's almost a bump ball. You see how far it up it pitches? And look at that. You can see it was going away from him all the way at great speed. Suddenly, everything slots into place. His line and length is perfect. He's starting on off stump, moving away. Mark Boucher, the new batsman. He wonders why it's all been looking so easy for the last half an hour or so. He'll be comforted by the fact that uh, South Africa are 64 runs in the lead. Franklin Rose and Mark Boucher will really feel that he's had some very hard luck indeed. Tremendous delivery from Rose. He picks up his fifth wicket. South Africa, 262 for seven. Well, happiness for this man who gets five wickets for the first time in his career. Look at that delivery. It is absolutely magnificent. He goes South Africa, 262 for seven. Uh, a pretty useful average and as the West Indies know he is a very difficult customer to dislodge and a very annoying opponent as well Simcox to face them once again the new ball has created some excitement in a test match Oh, he's hit that well. Ambrose can't see it. The umpire has, and Walsh has. Good shot from Simcox. It's, uh, he's pretty much on the back foot looking to pull any delivery. He just catches up with that quite nicely. Ambrose didn't move a muscle because he didn't see it leave the bat. There's a man sort of lurking deepish square leg, not right back. Beautifully hit. They don't come much better than that. And that is the mark of a man at the peak of his powers. That's the shot of the, shot of the series almost. In terms of how he had to thread it through the fielders, there's a short extra cover and a mid-off. The ball swinging, and he's got it absolutely perfectly. A, in the middle of the bat, and B, dissecting those two fielders. Superb. Good stride with the left foot. Look at that. 
the gap isn't more than five meters between those two fielders in terms of angles and it would never looked anything less than four from the moment he hit it well that's a high score of the series so far and again this time not quite beating ambrose but getting a single These are the shots that we saw and he played with such regularity on tour in England, not only in the test matches but also in the limited over games and the matches against the counties, quite brilliant, playing in the V beautifully. He's edged it away to third man. Full toss. I don't think Simcox picked it up, yeah. Yes, you could hear him say, I didn't see it. Get him near see shot from Pat Simcox because that is uh, that's very much his area whether it's a slow bowler or a seam bowler or a quick bowler bowling it's right in the slot he's just hit through the line that's all outstanding stroke even though he didn't make as clean a contact as he would have liked it's such a safe shot he hit it straight and he could not have hit it any straighter than that and it's uh, perfectly safe oh that's out he's bowled him and a six wicket for Franklin Rose and a dramatic entertaining and exciting the innings from Pat Simcox ends after 14 balls he's out for 12 bowled by the bowler of the day so far, Franklin Rose. Very, very intelligent bit of bowling. He's just been smashed back over his head. The batsman has a right to feel that he's going to get a bouncer. He doesn't. He gets a Yorker. It just str struggles its way through, threads its way through Pat Simcox's legs. It's Lozzy Zabale. Simcox gone for 12. South Africa lose their eighth wicket for 284. Alan Donald, South Africa's number 10. And averaging 11, just over 11, and he's played some very important innings here in South Africa in this uh, series as well in Port Elizabeth. Oh. Beautiful ball to end it, to end the over with. It's 284 for eight. Oh, he's pulled that and got it away for four runs. Well, there are only two fielders on the onside and Rhodes bisected them perfectly. Oopsie. Boy, you get a fright when you see that, don't you, Robin? I actually, I actually jumped out of my chair here. Yes. And it's as well that Rhodes is in, because had that been at Donald, I think it would have just ploughed straight into his body. Rhodes has been in there a long time. He's seeing it clearly. Look how high that is. And they're coming off. Now, I think that's a sensible... Getting in. Kirsten and Gibbs getting a good start for South Africa. Gibbs looked very good before hitting one straight to short mid-wicket. And uh, then uh, Franklin Rose got amongst them. And John T. Rhodes played another excellent innings, his second half century for South African consecutive test innings, and he really is looking the part as a test match. Chips, one or two good ones there. Cronier and Cullinan in the middle order, 
And then the important one, Pollock and Rhodes looked for a while to dominate, and they did as the ball got softer and the bowlers got tired. But once the second new ball came, then the wickets tumbled towards the end there with Pollock and Simcox and Boucher all falling to the very, very impressive Franklin Rose. And those figures uh, do tell a story. He missed out on the first two test matches, Franklin Rose, but has come back impressively here. Merv Dillon and uh, Nixon McLean out in the cold now with those sort of figures. A disappointing uh, performance by Ambrose, but uh, don't uh, think he'll do that again very quickly. And Walsh always very frugal. That's the match situation. So uh, South Africa have that lead nudging towards 100 with two wickets in hand. And well, can Jonty Rhodes become only the second South Africa to get a test 100 at Kingsmead here? The last one since the readmission was Kepler Vessels in the first test match between South Africa and India back in 1992. We'll have to wait and see. So let's have a look at today's highlights and we start with Jonty Rhodes on strike in the second over of the day. It's been bowled by Courtney Walsh. In the air and Courtney bowled. Walsh strikes the first blow for the West Indies and it's a big one because it's Jonty Rhodes out for 87, the unlucky number for all Australians. 13 short of 100. But what a valuable innings it's been from Rhodes, and what a valuable wicket that is for the West Indies. Quite a strange delivery, this. Look how sharply it gets up, and John T. Rhodes trying to angle it down, only succeeds in getting the shoulder, and good following up by Walsh. He's happy to get that, that wicket all right, and John T. Rhodes goes. David Tabrugger on his way in. Struck away in the air through the covers. Desperate dive from Chandapal. But two runs to Alan Donald. Struck away by Donald. Very, very competently indeed. Four runs. Well, as I speak, that's the first 300 uh, made by any side in the series, and it's the third test. 589 balls it's taken, but uh, a fine stroke and confident shot from Alan Don. Really interesting statistic, this. We talked yesterday about the value of the uh, South African tail, and we'll have another look at that because there's another couple. Two will be a and Donald's running as if he wants three. <laughs> really is scampering. Maybe he thinks John We saw, uh, those of you who are up at all hours watching the Ashes series this morning would have seen that Australia uh, in 1998 uh, have averaged 117 runs and innings for the last five wickets. And that's South Africa's reply. 139 South Africa average. There you go. Never mind the thigh pad. Two to Tabruga. Trying to erase the word permanent from his biography. Out. Straight. He got it right in the end. Underneath uh, Alan Donald's defence. And seven for Franklin Rose. Put our theory of outswingers on off stump out of the window. Blasted the middle stump out of the ground. Here it is again, in full his, and quick. In his interview with uh, Gerald de Kock, he uh, indicated that he just had to be patient and bowl them at the stumps earlier on in the innings, and uh, he's done so here. That was a fine delivery, just beating the outside edge. But Alan Donald has uh, done a fine job in uh, getting those 13. South Africa, 312 all out as he goes after 23 balls.
South Africa's reply to West Indies first innings of 198. They're there for you all to see. Kirsten caught Hooper Bold Rose for 26. Gibbs played really nicely, caught Wallace Bold Rose for 35. Cullis, an unusual failure in his uh, run of form right now, out for 11. Played a pretty rash shot, if one had to describe it uh, kindly. Daryl Cullinan run out by centimetres, also by Rose, for a well-played 40. And you can see there that that's indicative of the way that the pitch has played. There's been something in it for the bowlers that bend their backs. There's been something in it all the time for them. And therefore, no batsman really settling in and dominating. Only John T. Rhodes. And he had to work hard for his 87. 312 then, a lead of 114. And that right-hand column that you saw just now, the individual scores will give you an indication of what the partnerships are likely to look at, look like. Not, nothing big or significant, but uh, they're just there the whole time. 57, the opening partnership, 22 for the next wicket, and then uh, Cullis out straight away, and then 60 for the fourth wicket, 42 for the fifth, 80 for the sixth, and contributions at the bottom there, 22, 11, and 17 for 8, 9, and 10. So. Uh, Again, indicative of the pitch. Kirtley Ambrose, a disappointment uh, in this particular innings. It might be that he was favouring an injury. He's off the field this morning. He might have been favouring that when he went into the game. So one can't be too harsh on him. Courtney Walsh, wonderful support bowling. 29 overs, six maidens, two for 68. But the man of the match to this date, 28 overs, six maidens, seven for 84. Franklin Rose, brilliant bowling performance. So now here come Wallace and uh, Murray with uh, a big ask now for the West Indies. Their batting has let them down time and again in this series and before it as well. Now is the time for the batsmen to stand up and be counted. And the conditions are fairly good for batting because unlike the first day when the West Indies were asked to bat by Hansi Grenier, we had the southerly wind blowing which inevitably assists the seam bowlers Today it's bowing more out of the north-northeast and uh, that improves batting conditions and certainly the wicket is still good. That's off the five pad, Donald has to re retrieve, they'll be able to get back to the second. Indeed it is leg buys. Just off the thigh pad and uh, looking for the deflection. Marie does come inside of his uh, stumps and just uh, looking to turn it away and miss the shot. But uh, runs here. Welcome for the West Indies. 114 of them behind. Little Wallace uh, on striker's end. Caught. Oh, superbly caught. And no ball has been called. Oh dear. Out goes the arm of umpire Dave Orchard after a brilliant catch by Daryl Cullinan and uh, Junior Murray can live on. Well, they all thought he had had him and so did uh, the crowd until the hand went out. It's over the front crease, no question about that. We did see in the first innings uh, Pollock uh, get the wicket of Ganga. When we re-showed it, uh, umpire Tiffin had just missed the no-ball. Not uh, it, unusual for that to happen. A lot of controversy with the Indian umpire Venkat, as far as that was concerned, a couple of seasons back. So perhaps just the luck that the West Indies uh, need. Would have been an immediate breakthrough for Pollock. But he might feel, well, look, uh, I got one in the first innings when I shouldn't, and on this occasion, it was my fault to overstep. Oh, there's another chance there that flies this time down to the third man boundary, and Jonty Rhodes seemingly to indicate there first up that he lost that. I think it was catchable, and I think he believes it was too. But uh, quite obviously, as he just holds his hands up and uh, admits that he should have taken it, the indication is that uh, he didn't pick it up. He was down, in fact, 
It came very quickly indeed, but those are the type of catches which we've seen taken in the series so far. <laughs> now he swings it away for four, back with a square. So, Jimmy Murray possibly appreciating that he's been a bit lucky to survive. There's a go at that one and gets it away to the boundary. Well, there's one thing about the West Indies, uh, you don't dare miss a ball. Because there's always something happening. And in this over alone, we've had a catch-up slip off a no ball, or now a fine stroke for another boundary. That's another four runs. It's a bit short, and this time he got onto it very well indeed, and cracked it four to square for four, so an expensive over there. Fifteen all in all in that over. And West Indies 17 for no wicket. He's caught surely this time. Well, he's not. Yes, he's going to be given out. The umpire's finger didn't go up, but uh, I think there was a little nod of the head from umpire Russell Tiffin to say, yes, you hit it, off you go. And uh, the first West Indian wicket is now down with Philo Wallace being caught behind off Alan Donald. Not a very impressive uh, start for the West Indies at all. A very impressive one, however, for Donald, who had troubled Wallace. Ball much too close to him. And there's the edge. And through to the keeper. No question about that. Umpire Russell Tiffin, in a rather unusual fashion, not raising the finger, just nodding the head. Because that's all Wallace needed. Breakthrough for South Africa. West Indies 17 for one. Remarkably lifelike sound. Superphone TV from Samsung. It was our anniversary, so I made the tea. A tricky part was the rose. Then came the music. She loves Mozart. I woke her up. Your room was nice, she said. I know. The flavor's perfect. Thanks. Mmm, tastes wonderful. I took a bath. Vikram, this is not our everyday cup of Darjeeling. Correct, I said. Because, honey, today is not every day. Runly, runly, at 100% Darjeeling. We know it because we grow it. Gussata. Bahad gussa. Kal raat TV pe dil hai ke... Kaati. Catch, catch, catch. Sabhi TV prasarit picture dikhaate hai kuch hissa kaat ka. Ab Samsung Vision Plus technology dikhaay puri picture bina kaate. Gussa. Ab kaisa gussa? NBA Inside Stuff is about... It's about, um... It's all about... I think that says it all. See, I had a little trouble with finding the words, but I know what I'm talking about. Be sure to watch NBA Inside Stuff each week on Star Sports. NBA Inside Stuff, Friday on Star Sports. The NBA Inside Stuff, brought to you by Nike. The champions of India. The victories of India. Bajaj Sports India. Friday on Star Sports. shot off the back foot. Rhodes will have to chase but he won't get there. It just almost gained on Jonty Rhodes so you can imagine how sweetly that was timed. 101 now for two. That is Shivnarayan Shandapal's 2000th run in Test cricket. That announcement's just been made over the uh, public address system here at Kingsmead, and that's what that applause is for. He doesn't acknowledge it. Not that he's being rude to the crowd or anything, but uh, Chandapal would have just said, so what? 
pulled away with disdain almost crashes into the boundary just backward of square very good shot by Chan Nepal very accurate described by Robin really with disdain saw it very early was short enough and through square leg very strong offside field plenty of uh, vacancies on the leg side in fact there are only two men on the leg side so really a wayward delivery from Pollock hits it so hard when he gets that little bit of width or that slightly loose delivery he just hits it so hard four more 116 for two room and placed perfectly backward of square for four too short uh, from Simcox and they're giving the left-handers time I just wonder here if as we saw with the Australians in the test match at Melbourne short McGill Gill giving being being given protection at the sweeper position deep cover well the same theory applies here it's an off spinner to the left-handed batsman And we've now had four boundaries through the covers. Timed again, pass mid off. Kanye in pursuit, won't get there. Four more to Chandapur. Yeah! Big appeal. Everybody's happy except uh, Umpire Orchard. I see Cronier with the catcher and looked pretty confident. That's Simcox. There was the war dance. Let's have a look. Pat to elbow. Neither the bat nor the glove in the vicinity from that replay. Pat. Elbow. Well done, David Orchard. This is, this is actually really interesting cricket. Lara can see the problems that are posed with that area outside his off stump, and the pad elbow would make him think, I've got to be careful now, because that could just as easily have been pad glove. And he's nearly got an edge on that. So he doesn't want to be dominated. That's a bad ball. And is he going to get full value for it? Yes. Despite the chase from Gibbs. Well, we were talking about having a sweeper out to uh, protect Pat Simcox for the ball that is slightly short outside the off stump. And remember that he's bowling into this wind or the wind is coming across him so it's so easy to drag the ball down and drop it short down the wicket and beautifully hit gasp as he might Simcox that was very very well played by Shivnarine Chandapal two brilliant strokes it's always a sign of a good player when he gets a ball that's slightly offline and he punishes it now this one wasn't offline he made it into a half volley by getting down the pitch and that stump camera picture shows you exactly how much he moved and that of course cuts out the rut outside the uh, left handers off stump it's a bad start to the over for pat simcox and uh, this is a period when really south africa the, the pitch is flattened out the off spinner really needs to try and contain Oh, there's a chance, and it's gone, a begging. Now, there are a couple of factors here, Lee. Well, huge frustration for Pat Simcox, because this was a great delivery. It's always a risk with a left-hander coming down to the off-spinner, because he can beat, get beaten on the outside. But in Mark Boucher's defense, it did kick quite substantially. Went high up in the air, and uh, although it must go down as a chance, test cricket 
it really was a most difficult one. And the fact that it went to the for the slip fielder indicates how much it, it turned for a start and then kicked away. And uh, who's to say that any voucher had got a glove to it, he would have been able to get back in time. Very, very difficult. Oh. Edge that away down to a very fine leg. And that'll be four to Chanderpaul. And that'll take him to a very well-played half-century. Flags fly high for Chanderpaul. He's been the fourth man on tour. And he came into this test with a big hundred up in Maritzburg against South Africa A. And this is how he got there offline. And a player of class won't let a ball like that go by without uh, capitalizing on it. 100 partnership as well. And Lara has played it beautifully to the deep cover boundary to bring in his half century. Classic cover drive by Brian Lara. Ooh, he's got that away down to a deep backward point with one hand and will get four for it as well. Complete change of pace by Alan Donald and nearly deceived Brian Lara, but it just shows the class of man. Watch the fingers here as he delivers. No discernible change, and then suddenly the thumb comes up and he bowls the off spinner full pitch. Look at it, one hand off the bat because of the change of pace, but he's still able to hit it into the gap, and the 150 comes up for the West Indies. got something onto that Chanderpaul and again he profits as Donald this time strays offline down the leg side and Chanderpaul collects four and the West Indies move on to 157 for two at the mid-afternoon drinks break it's been a long hard session for South Africa they've still got an hour to go this is how this ball came despite the acrobatic attempt of Mark Barcher down the leg side Well, nobody moved. Just lashed that square of the wicket on the offside, and uh, neither Rhodes nor Kirsten, who are patrolling that area, blinked an eye. 120 overs for an innings, and you get uh, saves, let's say 10 of those kind of saves. You're pulling back uh, 20 runs or thereabouts. Donald returns the favour and has that for a throw. Well, it's fielding which just rungs off a really good team. And South Africa, arguably the best all-round fielding team in the game. And there's a fast bowler who's just uh, completed an over in the middle of a spell and putting in that sort of commitment. The Champions of India. The Victories of India. Bajaj Sports India. Friday on Star Sports. Maan sargam kya hai? Jab kai sur ek saath milte hain, to usse sargam kehte hain. Jaise saare ga ma, padan ka, jaise dud, chini aur chai. Ha, jaise sargam chai ka rang, swad aur tumhara haat. Dunkins ki sargam chai, rang, swad aur aapka haat banaye ek surili sargam. Ye chai kisne banayi? Maan sargam. बहुत गुस्सा कल रात टीवी पे दिल है के काट दी कैच 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 सभी टीवी प्रसारित पिक्चर दिखाते हैं कुछ हिस्सा काट कर अब सैमसंग विजन प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी दिखाए पूरी पिक्चर बिना काटे गुस्सा अब कैसा गुस्सा The headlines and the scorelines 
With ANZ's sports line, you know the score. ANZ Sports Line. Update Saturday, Sunday and Monday, only on Star Sports. For the latest program information, visit our website. Gussata. Bahad Gussa. Kalraat TV pe dil hai ke... सभी टीवी प्रसारित पिक्चर दिखाते हैं कुछ हिस्सा काट कर अब सैमसंग विजन प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी दिखाए पूरी पिक्चर बिना काटे गुस्सा अब कैसा गुस्सा adding to the pressure this brilliant fielding bowlers need that oh well, Nick is cricked away the car practice will get a visit tomorrow probably this is in the air but this is four runs diving at cover but it was well wide of him he had no price on that one well, we were talking about the rash shot how easily that could have gone to hand caused almost definitely from the pressure that's been building up Chanty Rhodes making an unbelievable attempt and this is just a fraction short he pulls it humid wicket for four again it was in the air a little bit but that's fair enough Brings up the 150 run partnership. Only 163 balls and uh, a classy way in which to do it. See the wrists coming in there again. It's away and through and four. Chandra Paul has been very strong on that shot today. Short and wide. And he's found the gaps. It's a strong offside field. Placing it nicely between square cover and extra cover for the first scoring shot after the break. Not now though, that's a way for four. So sweetly timed that it beats the man chasing around the boundary from third man. Brings up the 200. Both left-handers very strong in that area, as uh, most left-handers are. Witt from the right arm fast bowler angled across him. And Lara putting it away with a full flourish of the bat. Yet another boundary to him. 15. And the West Indies 200 raised. by Herschel Gibbs and the South Africans are understandably delighted it's that sort of little bit of magic that it needs to break a fine partnership like this and to get rid of a great batsman like Brian Lara and once again they produced it the first time we've seen him really try the pull shot he hit it very well indeed magnificently taken by Gibbs and credit to Tobago as well for keeping Lara quiet as soon as he sees a ball come along but he reckons he can really put away he goes into the first shot Tobago is supported by Gibbs 201 for 3 Lara goes for 79 Paul Hooper the new batsman for a man with his talent that average of 34.5 is not really satisfactory but he has scored nine test hundreds he's calm he's caught caught and bowled how often does it happen that after a big partnership you get one and the other one goes shortly after and Chanapal has been caught and bowled by Pollock what a fine innings he's played what a fine innings Lara played but now they're both gone. Chanderpaul for 75. 
It's happened over and over to the West Indies in this series. A partnership building, one batsman goes, the other follows, and a partnership of 160, which looked as if it was pushing the West Indies towards a position where they could challenge in this match. They've now lost both of them. Two new batsmen will have to come in. Chandapal goes back, very disappointed. Out for 75, yet again falling short of 100, and the West Indies are 201 for four. Well, another big test now for Darren Ganga, playing in his first test match. He acquitted himself very well in the first innings. Is he caught? Oh, I think he might be caught. He just held on to it, did the voucher. A brilliant catch in the end, but for a moment, I thought it had slipped out. Somehow he held on to it, and now Carl Hooper is out and suddenly the West Indies in dreadful trouble. Let's take a look. Well, how quickly things can turn around and uh, a couple of sensational catches. It's uh, in the glove and then he rolls over and who knows what has happened after that, but he reckons he's got it. Carl Hooper says yes. And he goes out, that's all he needs. Confirmation from the keeper that he's held on. And Carl Hooper disappointingly out for two. 204 for five. Well, Ridley Jacobs, a new batsman, a wicket keeper. He's got to come and join Darren Ganga. The West Indies having lost three wickets for three runs in a sensational little spell of cricket. Thick inside edge from Hooper bat well away from the body and Boucher goes down gets the glove there ball hasn't come out yet and he grabs it to his body tucks it under him and uh, says yes I've taken it and that was good enough for Carl Hooper perhaps the other batsman may have uh, said well let's have a look at the, the replay let's ask the umpires their opinion well brings that glove up towards his midriff and then gets the other glove there in support and just clings on to it. It was a very sharp bit of work to get that uh, left glove down there. It was a brilliant delivery by uh, Pollock. Oh my goodness, these South Africans are G'd up now. Brilliance all round. 204 for five. But even from this angle, you won't see it very well. He moves very nicely. To have to change direction, you can see that, and uh, it hits the ground. Uh, the difficulty was whether he could, uh, in fact, have seen that. In the meantime, we've got a boundary coming off Alan Donald, the outside edge of, Dar of Darren Ganga. So Alan Donald frustrated by the outside edge. Pulled away. Gibbs. Oh! Unbelievable. Unbelievable catch. That's two. What a fantastic catch. There aren't enough words to describe it. You're well, quite right. You just cannot describe in words the value of, of that effort there, going over his head at pace and unbelievable. That's all you can say. Incredible catch, his second of the innings, and Sean Pollock is quite rightly delighted. And there he is, still puts the shades back on. He's a, an incredibly cool customer, and Darren Ganga goes for five. Raul Lewis on his way to the crease. Yeah. Ouch, caught Boucher, ball Donald. And the West Indies are now beginning to crumble, having been so well positioned earlier in the day, now find themselves in lots of trouble in terms of this game. 
Alan Donald's 250th test wicket and a very valuable one it was indeed putting South Africa well on track for a momentous victory this one a far more routine catch for Mark Boucher and the West Indies are 214 for 7 as the duck leads Roll Lewis off the field wicket gives Alan Donald his 250th he's the second quickest bowler both in uh, probably in pace through the air and in time taken to achieve that milestone ever Dennis Lilly achieved it in 48 test matches Alan Donald's done it in his 50th and now Raw Lewis exactly as he did in the first innings Stravigan drive to wide ball outside the off stump touched it caught behind well, it's nicely played by Jacobs through the covers the captain gives chase and has to give up in the end going out. Is that a go? And he'll get four runs through mid on standard deliver. Oh, he's gone for it. And it'll go down to a very fine leg for four runs. Oh, that's gone right through him. Whether he got bat onto it, I'm not certain, but it certainly brushed the leg of the five. And four runs given by umpire Orchard. Another inside edge. Yes, an edge there onto the leg. So three fours to Rose now. Ball off Pollock. And not all of them from the middle of the bat. One from the middle of the bat. That's smacked away. Terrific blow. He's cotton onto the slow ball now. Yeah, it? Go for it. A crash. Now what? Now what? Umpires. Cronier. Has anybody appealed? I don't think anyone has appealed yeah. yet. Stump's broken. Hansi Cronier comes across. And uh, what's going to happen here? I think he's recalled and he said, if there was an appeal, I want to withdraw it. And the West Indian supporters taking their hats off to the South African captain. Ridley Jacobs called a crash between Callis and Rose. The throw must complete, do, do all the, the obligatory actions to complete the uh, run out and then let the umpires and uh, the captain decide. No, I don't think there was an appeal. No one seemed excited about it. It's got this one away, going over the top. Down to a wideish long on, and that's four more. What to think about for Jacques Callas? That was outside the off stump and finished up hitting the mid wicket boundary. The uh, ball 74 overs old now, not doing too much in the air or off the pitch. And he's going to be caught, I think. Underneath it is Special Gibbs and Franklin Rose hitting out just once too often, not getting hold of it. Up, up, and up it went, and Herschel Gibbs had lots of time to position himself underneath it. Did so perfectly, and he takes a third catch. Two of them have been absolutely brilliant. That was quite easy, even though it did go up pretty high. I think he was rather concentrating on the light than the delivery being bold and uh, this holds out here it was a routine delivery on a good line and length and Herschel Gibbs had a long long wait there but his easiest catch by a long way in this innings 
of 22 from Franklin Rose from just 27 balls with five boundaries. He chanced his arm and he's uh, made a few, but it's now 245 for eight. See, the umpires are on once again talking. I'm not sure it's not about the, the dismissal. I think they once again talking about the light. Of course, from their point of view, it won't look at all good if with the fall of the wicket, they then do offer the light to the new batsman because Franklin Rose will then justifiably feel aggrieved and angry. Then again, if the West Indies lose a couple more wickets and are bowled out in this light, they might uh, have rather had the umpires offer the new batsman than not at all. <laughs> they quite a win, really. Kirtley Ambrose walks ever so slowly to the wicket. He's gone past uh, the 1,000 runs in test match cricket, but then he's played a lot of test matches and a lot of test innings, 120. But you can see the average not so good. Just the 150 against Australia in Port of Spain, Trinidad. Oh, there could be a run out here. Ambrose is very late in starting. Maybe so was Hansi Kronier, in a way, at mid-on. Now the umpires have offered the batsman the light, and they've accepted it. The Ambrose. And Ambrose drives handsomely down the ground. This should be four runs. And is. Well, what a tremendous shot to start the day's play with, and it brings up the West Indies 250. And might be in business. No, over the head of cover, and they get one run. So that was not a very convincing shot by Ambrose after that lovely... Well, we saw him in the last over just chip one out over the head of Gary Kirsten in the covers. This time, he finds the fielder deepish at mid-on, and Kirtley Ambrose is gone. So Sean Pollock gets his fifth wicket of the innings, yet another fall of five, and Ambrose becomes yet another West Indies batsman to hoist the catch into the deep. We saw Franklin Rose yesterday, we saw several softer dismissals, not that Ambrose is a key batsman, but nevertheless, a man back there waiting for the catch, and Ambrose obliges. So he goes for five, it's 2.52 for nine. Run! In the air, but safe. They're going to run, and there might be trouble. Now they might get an overthrow. Well, Walsh has gone too far past the wickets down at the bowler's end to be able to get back for the overthrow. But that was nearly a court and bowl for Alan Dodd. Strike. He was going to be out there, but he pushed it up towards mid-off thought perhaps Minoff was a little bit deeper and the ball was running a little bit slower than it eventually did. But he took the chance. He wants to get Jacobs on the strike. He's stretched out there. He would have been gone. But he just wants to get Jacobs on that strike. Deal for LBW. Always difficult when you're going round or over the wicket to the left-hander. I think Jacobs indicated that... Uh, got a touch onto it as well. He just held the bat up a bit after the appeal. That was pitched outside the leg stump in any case. Nicely cut by Jacobs. They get one. If they go for a second, there'll be trouble. They decide against it. Eighth time that um, Pollock has bagged five wickets or more in an innings during this test match was presented with a beautiful painting to commemorate uh, being only the second South African to do the double of 100 test wickets and 1,000 test runs. There it is, his father on the right, and him in action, the main picture. And uh, the only other man to have done that, left arm seamer opening batsman, Trevor Goddard. 
One only here. You don't take on Alan Donald's arm. Edge and dropping short of the solitary slip. And uh, being deflected down to third man for another single to Courtney Walsh. that miss. I think the, the stumps dodged at the last moment. Perfect delivery. Well, perfect with the exception that it just wasn't close enough. But <laughs> and I'm sure the stumps um, with another quarter of varnish uh, would have gone over. Kind of delivery which uh, we saw Franklin Rose used a very good effect to the late order of South Africa. That is the end. Another one well pitched up by Alan Donald. The South Africans not needing the new ball to knock over the remaining two wickets in the West Indian side. And uh, the West Indies all out for 259. Courtney Walsh being bowled by Alan Donald. Well, he missed uh, on the first occasion. Got the radar right on the second. First one was just a, a millimeter away. This time the off stump the rocked back. Too good for Courtney Walsh. And the West Indies 259 lead by 145. 146 for South Africa to win and wrap up the series. Well, that's the stump camera view another express to long Donald delivery much too good for Courtney Walsh turning him square the bat going down the wrong line inside of the delivery and um, the stump bar there ripped from its umbilical cord uh, so the stump cam connection also came out of the ground and here's uh, Sean Pollock with five wickets to his name. Yet another occasion for the outstanding young South African all-rounder leading the team off the field. And they'll feel very cheery going back into that dressing room. They've got another victory in sight. It looked so good for the West Indies uh, after Junior Murray having been caught off a no ball when he had one. And then next ball snicked it over the slips, third slip for four. Uh, Murray eventually making 29 as he did in the first innings but then a partnership of 160 between Chanderpaul and Lara it was wonderful cricket and it came to an end because of a superb catch by Herschel Gibbs uh, Lara going for 79 and as is so often the case Chanderpaul went very soon after that and then Hooper to that controversial Boucher catch and the West Indies had gone from 201 for three to 204 suddenly for five and uh, well there was nothing much else that uh, came along to help them Jacobs uh, stayed there quietly for 15 from 69 balls we had a brief uh, little bit of fun from Franklin Rose who made 22 from 27 balls but uh, not much more to offer and the West Indies again out for a pretty low total 259 just not enough to pose too big a, a challenge to the South Africans. That partnership of 160 was a joy to watch, and if only that could have gone on. And uh, it was wonderful cricket and came to an end with a wonderful bit of cricket by the Herschel Gibb catch. And then Rose, as I say, making 22 of the 31 for the ninth wicket. Marvellous bowling again by the South Africans. Donald, well, with Courtney Walsh's wicket there at the end, three for 62. But for the eighth time in his career, South African all-rounder Sean Pollock picking up five wickets, five for 83 after his first uh, three spells were barren. Good support from Tobruka, Callas and Simcock. Ramu, chai. Chai. 
डबल डायमंड आपने बिल्कुल दूध कितना डाला दो कप दो चम्मच तो फिर चाय पत्ती भी चाय दो कप चम्मच दो चम्मच दो चम्मच नहीं चमकन डबल डायमंड है जरा सी चाय असर दिखाए और एक प्लान है डबल डायमंड चाय फ्रॉम डंकन गुस्सा आता है बहुत गुस्सा कल रात टीवी पे दिल है के सभी टीवी प्रसारित पिक्चर दिखाते हैं कुछ हिस्सा काट कर अब सैमसंग विजन प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी दिखाए पूरी पिक्चर बिना काटे गुस्सा अब कैसा गुस्सा War is war, and there's no retreat, no surrender. War is war. See all your favorite superstars go into battle, armed with heavy artillery. Everyone will fight the good fight when war is war, and there's nothing pretty about it. War is war. Thursday on Star Sports. Mark, and he'll get two. Cut away by Kirsten, back with a square, that'll be four. That's a tremendous shot, you know, yesterday we saw Brian Lara hit that, and everybody got very excited because of the flourish with which Lara plays, but that was just as efficient and just as good a cricket stroke. Gary Kirsten is really looking in uh, in good nick. You don't have to touch the money, but uh, when you see a man playing a stroke like this, um, all right, it was a bit short. It wasn't all that short. It wasn't a long hop by any means, but he got his feet nicely in position. He just timed it so well. Played very nicely here in the first innings, and he'll be happy to be off the mark. Well timed, push into the covers. Good shot from Gibbs. Now look for three here. Gibbs is very quick between the wickets. He's going to the uh, shorter end in terms of uh, the throw-in where it comes into. And he moves on to five and South Africa on to 13. Yeah, yeah, Gary said wait. Kirsten wanted the ball to get past the fielder first. Two to Gibbs. Uh, had uh, Franklin Rose been in the correct position, I don't think he would have cut that off, but he would have had a much better chance. If he'd been wider, as Robin's been suggesting. Good bit of cricket, this. And once again, Herschel Gibbs playing the ball very nicely to close to his body gives him a better opportunity to time the ball by using the pace of the ball and he moves into double figures opening that that's always the first milestone you look for two it's very quick Cool. So three to the score. It's a good stroke. It's four runs. Doesn't need chasing from the moment he hit it. You don't often see Gary Kirsten hitting cover drives this straight. It was a half volley, but really well put away. Balance. Follow through. Have to hurry here. Kind of signal that would cause immense trouble against South African fielders. 
of the difference between the teams. And he's got that nicely away, very fine. Yep. And come back for the second. Now long range hand waving there between Rose and Murray. Murray gives him a stare now. Hands akimbo. This uh, is not good to see from a team which is down. Murray, no way he could have prevented the second run there. He came across, sent the return in. He's a wicketkeeper in the outfield. Rose felt that he should have got there and saved at least one. And there was a long range bickering between the two of them. Not a good piece of running and communication between these two. Push and run. Always one if you really commit yourself to it from the outset. Beautiful shot. Wonderfully struck by Herschel Gibbs. Piercing the offside field, which is uh, fairly thick. And uh, bringing up another boundary. Rose not getting the swing that he got in the first innings when he had his seven wickets. And uh, driving through the line, Herschel on a very good pitch here. Great certainty in that shot. And uh, Rose this seems to be a little bit wider of the stumps on delivery than he was in the first innings. Oh, struck that beautifully. Timed it so sweetly. It's a long chase. And will be won by Lewis. They complete three. Good throw. That's the area that Gibbs found himself out, caught out in uh, the first innings. This time he kept it down beautifully, waited for it. And also worked it away between the fielders. Gary Kirsten gets it away down to backward square. They think of a second. Uh, the throw was too good. He's caught this one away down towards the third man boundary. Walsh chases after it. He's reluctant to bend, just getting the foot there. And oh my, it looks as though something might have happened. Yes, he pulled up almost as he got to the ball. And uh, he's not happy at all. One doesn't it doesn't appear to be cramp and watch there is uh, when his leg goes and he now is in trouble he, he grabs a hamstring to start well he's in real trouble now he's, he's gone to ground foot there he just left hand on the, the back of the leg hamstring area rolls it back but he's now gone down Well, he's being helped off in quite a lot of pain. Well, that's a sorry sight, I must say. Now he opens his shoulders to good effect too. That's a lovely shot, hitting it with the spin over mid-wicket. One bounce, four runs. Good positive batting here because uh, Raw Lewis had settled into a wonderful length and was causing him some difficulty. So uh, he decided to take the initiative and uh, it's a great boundary. And South Africa moves to a half century opening partnership, the se second of the innings of the of the game. Oh, well now, what spin there was there, and now the ball has run down behind the wicket keeper but Gary Kirsten suddenly realized he hadn't really played a shot Herschel Gibbs was more than halfway down the wicket wanting the run and uh, Kirsten sent him back saying no no I remember now I didn't play a shot but umpire Tiffin was unmoved there we'll have a look at it in a moment I watched the ball pitch incredibly wide into that big thick rough and then it comes shooting back and uh, a difficult decision for the umpire to, to make because he's gone forward and uh, watch the angle there it hits the back pad and in fact on that angle it looked as though it was plumb 
Let's just cut away nicely and we'll go to the fence back with a square. Gary Kirsten now asserting the dominance in terms of the partnership. He goes into the 30s with that fine cut. He decided that uh, he's not going to just sit there and wait for the loose one. He's going to create them and he's done so very well here. Oh, that was, I think, just short of Brian Lara at first slip. It's going to be more, four more runs down the third man. We'll have to see if that carried. Nice little angled shot from Brian Lara getting down, but uh, really no chance by the looks of things here. Let's see it again. down the wicket magnificent shot straight down the ground and over the advertising boards a splendid six by Herschel Gibbs well we saw how brilliant he was in the field earlier in the match and now we're seeing another touch of genius here it's a flat delivery and yet he was able to get down the wicket and just stroke that it was never hit hard just hard enough of course for the next one He beats his man there. And it ends the over. 70 for no wicket. Gussata. Bahad Gussata. Kalraat TV pe dil hai ke... Kaat di. Catch, catch, catch. Sabhi TV prasarit picture dikhaate hai kuch hissa kaat ka. Ab Samsung Vision Plus technology dikhaay puri picture bina kaate. Gussa? Ab kaisa gussa? It was our anniversary. The tricky part was the rose. Then came the music. She loves Mozart. I woke her up. Your room was nice, she said. I know. The flavor's perfect. Thanks. Mmm, tastes wonderful. I took a bow. Vikram, this is not our everyday cup of Darjeeling. Correct, I said. Because honey, today is not every day. Runly, runly, at 100% Darjeeling. We know it because we grow it. On the surface, this is just a book. Facts and figures, numbers on a page. But these numbers are more than cold. They are records of the heart-pounding heroics that only cricket can produce. Star looks behind the figures to bring you some of the best cricket ever played. Cricket Classic. Thursday on Star Sports. Gussata. Bahad gussa. Kal raat TV pe dil hai ke... Kaat di. Catch, catch, catch. Sabhi TV prasarit picture dikhaate hai kuch hissa kaat ka. Ab Samsung Vision Plus technology dikhaay puri picture bina kaate. Gussa? Ab kaisa gussa? This is the Star TV Network, and you're watching Star Sports. Harry Kirsten uses his feet nicely here, and he's got it through the gap. And for the, for the instant that he played it, it didn't look as though it had enough on it to go to the boundary, but it just keep, kept gathering pace goes comfortably into the boundary rope for another boundary. So both batsmen have uh, scant respect for the fact that lunch is a matter of a few minutes away. Oh, he's done exactly that. Goes high up in the air, two men converging. Oh, he's dropped it. Ridley Jacobs has dropped Herschel Gibbs. Herschel Gibbs had tucked his bat under his arm and he was on his way. But there was confusion because Jacobs was going for it out at mid-wicket. The mid-wicket came in, Ganga to want to get underneath it. I don't know if there was the right calling going on. You see, both of them are getting under. Eventually, the last moment, the mid-wicket bails out. And Jacobs, I think, affected by the close proximity of his teammate, makes a hash of it. And Herschel Gibbs lives on. that in super slow mo I don't know how Ridley Jacobs ultimately let it slip through his gloves. 
I think you're dead right that a man breathing down your, your neck, as it were, um, would have put him off, but it, it looked it's as there, it solidly into the gloves, yes. I think he was waiting for the collision, the impact, any moment. Anyway, Gibbs lives on, nudges it away back with a square for a single. Slapped it through mid-wicket. It's almost as if uh, he got a bit too close to it and then had to adjust, and he did it well enough before. Yes, his position didn't look uh, correct to get uh, that shot. There he goes. As you say, he was too far down. But uh, somehow he managed to get it. Down he comes. And right across it. He to stab that out for a single. Roll Lewis uh, having a rough time in his uh, two test matches so far. Googly, I feel that uh, Gibbs might have read that off the pitch as opposed to out of the hand, but nevertheless, he got it away for two. Good running. 84 for no wicket. Down the wicket. Nicely timed. You get two here. It's good to see someone like Herschel Gibbs prepared to use his feet to a leg spinner. It's the end of the over. 86 now for no wicket. Very delicate. Excellent running. Really good example to all young cricketers watching. The value of running the first run quickly. Invariably turns that into two or first two runs quickly, turning it into three. Look at Gibbs, head down and off. Kirsten's the one who's really got to do the scampering. Because he knows he knows that he's going to the danger end or the first end they're likely to throw to. Just uh, one ball bold of Raul Lewis is over. They're certainly rushing through their overs, these two. And down the wicket. Raul Lewis saw him coming. Bowled it wide and Gibbs adjusted brilliantly and stroked it away back with a square for four. Well, Lewis certainly saw him coming. No, no, perhaps that was a correct ball. Others might have given him the googly so to have tracked him down, but he was uh, bowling the leg break to try and get the stumping, leave him down the wicket, but in the end it was a little too short and gave him time to play a fine square cut. Yep. That's that away for one. That takes on, gives on to 48. back to the bowler in the air. four runs now for the first hundred partnership for the opening wicket for the series these two put on over 50 in the first innings he's chipped that and he's going to get two no he's not 
going to get one. I thought he might have uh, had a little race for his 50 there. 97 for no wicket. Oh, oh big appeal and out for 49. Umpire Orchard has made the decision. Gibbs, I think, is just very, very disappointed. Or did he get a little bat on it? If he did, he'll be even more disappointed. Clever bowling here from Bupa. Push it through quicker. Mm -hmm. And just covering middle. Very confident appeal. And at least the West Indies managed to take a wicket. So Gibbs, LBW bold hooper for 49. Another very pleasant innings from him. South Africa 97 for one. That all started at establishment and with a century in Melbourne against Australia in the second innings of that test match. And he's now grown with stature and with experience. This is his 22nd test match. And his high score was 132, or is 132. Scored at Old Trafford last English summer or earlier in this year. This was the end of Gibbs. The ball's pitched on middle. It's turned. Can't see anything wrong with that. Just uh, played all around it. So wicket for Hoopo hasn't had much bowling in the Test series. Uh, had a very long spell against South Africa A in the preceding match. Get an idea of the height here. All the way back. It's a good shot. Nicely timed. It's beaten. Uh, the backward point, one go all the way to the boundary. Good shot to get off the mark with, perfectly played. And the end of a successful over for the West Indies, 99 for one. गुस्साता है, बहुत गुस्सा। कल रात टीवी पे दिल है के कार्डी कैच कैच कैच। सभी टीवी प्रसारित पिक्चर दिखाते हैं कुछ हिस्सा काट कर। अब सैमसंग विजन प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी दिखाए पूरी पिक्चर बिना काटे। गुस्सा? अब कैसा गुस्सा? Is about, it's about, um, it's all about, I think that says it all. I had a little trouble with finding the words, but I know what I'm talking about. Be sure to watch NBA Inside Stuff each week on Star Sports. NBA Inside Stuff, Friday on Star Sports. The NBA Inside Stuff, brought to you by Nike. For remarkably lifelike sound, Super Home TV from Samsung. Side edge with one run. 
And that brings up the South African 100. Just 46 required now. with a similar delivery in the first innings one of the few that passed the bat from Lewis in the first innings from Carlos Milestone for Jacques Cullis with that single. That takes him to a thousand runs in Test cricket. 550s, 200, so good conversion rate already. Delicately played by Kirsten. Once again, Cullis is head down to try and make that into three, but won't. Third youngest South African, just 23 days, years rather, and 74 days to reach that milestone. What a good uh, prospect he is for South Africa for the years to come. He would have another 10 years at least in international cricket. And of course, it's not only his batting, but as we've seen increasingly, quality of his deceptively quick swing bowling and his fielding that, uh, will just be one more deliberately played by Kirsten oh well run my goodness me that is good running and uh, one has to suggest lazy fielding and takes him through to his 50 as well it's made uh, the fielding attempt even worse 106 for one now. Gary Kirsten, 50 not out. Six fours. Just watch. Quickly runs the first one. He thinks there's only one there, and then he says, oh, no, I can comfortably go through for the second, and does. It's beautifully struck. The fielders just look at each other as the ball splits them. And almost the advertising boards as well. Yes, that was perfectly placed. It really was not that short of delivery. It wasn't that wide. But Jacques Callis using his feet beautifully, getting right back and across. What's that back foot? See there in the balance, tremendous into the gap. He is the most beautifully balanced player, isn't he? Virtually every shot he plays, he's uh, always nicely balanced. Beautifully driven, Kirsten finds the gap on the offside, used his feet, got to the pitch, and steered it to the left of Chanderpaul and all the way to the boundary. Yes, uh, Ryan Laura has decided to attack here. Even though it's coming around the wicket, he's got two slips, or a slip and a gully, but nobody's sweeping. I, I just can't believe that there's nobody out there saving the one. Saving the full, I mean. Carl Hooper saying, don't throw it, hold on to it. You're going to make this single anyway. Pulled that away, well stopped at square leg though. Charm to pull onto it quickly. Glare from the fast bowler. No fast bowler likes to be pulled like that. Oh, it was a rank short ball and uh, well, the Rose is quite lucky. He didn't get punished for four there, you can thank the fielder. It was his loosener as well, so mm. you can expect this one to be quite a lot quicker. Well, pulled away, beautifully executed. Again, perfect balance and timing from Jacques Callis. 
124 for one. Such a good shot. Kirsten lofts that over the mid-wicket area. One bounce four. It is going to be a flurry of boundaries. Who knows? Well, he picked it up with the, the turn. Ball turning into him. Picked it up and lofted it, that's a typical left-hander shot against the leg break, turning in. He'll have to hurry. Ah, the ball went perhaps a little squarer of the fielder than I could judge from... ...got in quite easily in the end. Brilliant. That's good to see. Now, if everyone could be like Shivnar and Chandapur on this West Indies side, they wouldn't be losing as they are. There are a few that you can pick out. Riddy Jacobs, Shivnar and Chandapur, 100% all the time, even though the opposition needs only 10 to win. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. Just a beautiful shot. And the end of the over, 143 for one. You mentioned the pluses, and I suppose if you go on a tour and you can point to three players who have come on in that tour, two or three new players, relatively speaking, players that you're looking at to carry you through to the future, it's not uh, all just a matter of attitude, and uh, the difference between these two teams in attitude is so marked. Yesterday, West Indies were right on top at T. Two wonderful batsmen playing wonderfully. And you could sense when South Africa came out after the interval that they had regrouped, that they were ready to come back at the West Indies, and that magnificent catch just changed things around. That's it. That's a series win. Gary Kirsten knows it. He's celebrating as if he'd just gone to 100, and he must feel that way. Hansi Cronier delighted. And rightly so, they saw a series snatched away from them earlier in the year when England came back from one down with two to play and won the series. And how pleased the South African side is. There they all are celebrating to wrap up a series, a five-match series, within three games. Commiserations for Brian Lara. Now... It's time for the West Indies to rebuild, as we've just been discussing. And they will. They're a very proud cricketing nation. That was the winning stroke. Very happy man. He knows what that means to Hansi Cronier. He knows what it means to Bob Woolmer. And obviously, he knows what it means to the rest of the team. So the trophy will be handed over and can be after only three games of the series. South Africa win by nine wickets, an emphatic victory here in Durban. And spare a thought for Phil Russell, who provi provided these players and us and all of you at home with a, a beautiful cricket pitch on which to play test cricket. Good to bat on, but something in it for the bowlers if they really bend their backs and work hard so while the South Africans celebrate and no doubt uh, pop open a bottle of champagne or two we have presentations and interviews for you still so don't go away we'll be back shortly after the break जैसे सारे गांव बादन का जैसे दूध चीनी और चाय जैसे सरगम चाय का रंग स्वाद और तुम्हारा 
हाथ की सरगम चाय रंग स्वाद और आपका हाथ बनाए एक सुरीली सरगम ये चाय किसने बनाई सरगम और डंकल गुस्सा आता है बहुत गुस्सा कल रात टीवी पे दिल है के सभी टीवी प्रसारित पिक्चर दिखाते हैं कुछ हिस्सा काट कर अब सैमसंग विजन प्लस टेक्नोलॉजी दिखाए पूरी पिक्चर बिना काटे गुस्सा अब कैसा गुस्सा Star Sports continues its coverage of Europe's most dynamic football league. Get ready to see more goals, more action from the Spanish league. Third place Valencia need to catch up with leaders Mallorca, but first they must beat Real Sociedad. Catch the showcase match on Star Sports. For the latest program information, visit our website, ESPNStar.com. And of course, a very happy man will be the South African captain. Not only has he won another test match and a check of 25,000 rand, that'll uh, not be that important to him, but he has won the series, Hansi Kronier. Well, Hansi, to be 3-0 up in a, a five-match test series, uh, it's just absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> I think we can start smiling now. But we said right from the start, you know, that there's 25 big days against a magnificent uh, test side. You know, the West Indies have a tremendous record and a proud record. And I, I'm sure... Uh, at 100 on his, on his home ground. But, um, and then coming back uh, yesterday, and, and, and Sean and the guys really, really bowled well. Yes, our bowlers did the job again, and our fielders are always there. But, I mean, somehow they were even more brilliant, it seems, this time than ever before. Yeah, well, the way um, Brian and, and Shiv Nareen was playing uh, yesterday, it was, it was always going to be tough for us to break that partnership, and it needed some, some form of brilliance, whether it was a good ball or a great catch or a good run out. And, um, you know, Herschel picked up that catch and just lifted the whole side. I think it was getting very, very warm and humid out there, and the bowlers were getting a bit tight. But if you see catches like that going, um, and you just have to think back one year to Adelaide, where those sort of catches weren't sticking, and, and that's the difference between winning and losing a test match. And, and you need to take those sharp chances, and, and fortunately they stuck for us in this test match and uh, capitalised on a couple of good runouts and, and, and good catches, and you can back up the ball at that way too. Are you surprised that you've been able to win the series as easily as you have? Well, I must pay tribute to, um, to our... Uh, coaching staff. I think Bob and Corey and Eddie Barlow, they did a tremendous job. They planned this uh, series particularly well. Um, we did a lot of hard work in September um, when we had camp and we discussed all these things and our goals and where we wanted to go and a lot of credit must go to them. I think from that point of view we, we planned this um, series very well. So I'm, I'm not surprised um, at the way we played. Uh, I must, must say that I think the West Indies have still got a lot of petrol left uh, in their tank. I think they're going to come back with a a good fight over the next 10 days. You're a captain of a very good outfit at the moment. It seems to have a nice balance over Australia today. That, yeah. that was another big surprise. Yeah, it was interesting to listen to Botham and Border talk about the target of 175 and Botham said that Border was a bit edgy at the start. So small totals seem to be um, haunting the Australians. They seem to, to stumble at the, the final hurdle uh, for small totals. But credit must go to England for keeping in the game and fighting for them. And they've kept the series alive. This series by South Africa, but I, knowing you, there'll be no relenting. I think the wicket in Cape Town has been a tremendous wicket for, for good cricket, and the way Brian was hitting the ball um, in this game, you know, uh, Shiv Nareen and, and Carl Hooper, also short of some runs, I'm sure they will come good at some stage. The series is very much uh, still alive from that point of view, and, and the bowlers have done a tremendous job for them, so it's going to be 10 grueling days of test cricket, if you can count on that. Well, congratulations, Hansi. We're not going to give you the trophy now. It'll only happen at Centurion, Thanks but well done. Thank you, thank you. So to the man of the match, and the adjudicator was S.K. Reddy, former president of Natal Cricket, former manager of the South African side, and indeed a former selector. Now, he had quite a job in many ways. There were a number of candidates on the West Indian side. Of course, Franklin Rose for that magnificent 7 for 84 in the South African first innings. And the run-out, remember that, of Darrell Cullinan, so he had a hand in eight of the wickets there. 
and then Brian Laura with his 79. On the South African side, there was uh, Pollock for the eighth time in his career, getting five wickets in an innings, ending with six for 128. And then Jonty, um, no, Herschel Gibbs came into the reckoning. A good 35, a good 40, and uh, four catches in an innings, including two absolutely brilliant efforts, and uh, particularly breaking that partnership of Chanderpaul and Lara. But in the end, SK Reddy decided that his man of the match was for an innings that was very valuable in boosting South Africa to over 300 in their first innings, giving them that handy lead, and he feels that was a big contributory factor to South Africa winning this test match, and as usually, brilliantly, Jonty Rhodes. A check for 10,000 Rand from Robin Gucci of Breweries uh, for Jonty. Uh, and Jonty, well, Sean Pollock's been hogging it for the last couple of test matches. I'm sure it's nice to have a change. Well, definitely. I mean, the older blokes in the team like myself and Hansi, we've just been staying out of the limelight, um, letting the young boys get their moment of glory. And uh, back in front of the Kingsmead crowd, um, it's fantastic. I mean, the support we've had over the last three or four days has been superb. So it's really nice that a, a homeboy, um, I suppose, gets some from Pollock as a hometown boy, but his amount of time he travels these days, um, his home probably a suitcase, so, yeah. <laughs> now, you were almost upstaged out there in the field by Herschel Gibbs. Uh, he had a, a wonderful test. I was definitely upstaged. Um, there were some fantastic catches. You know, not only Herschel Gibbs, but Carl Hooper took a great catch, dismissed Polly, and Hansi spoke about changing a, a test match. Um, where Sean and I were batting together, we had quite a nice partnership going, and uh, Carl Hooper's catch brought an end to that really productive partnership. And Herschel, I mean, we were we were quite desperate. The wicket was uh, a good batting deck. The ball was getting a bit soft, and the heat was making the guys toil a bit. So, one moment of brilliance was a fantastic catch. And the but it's the batting that really won you this man of the match award. And uh, you come off that wonderful series where you made 367 runs in the Test, at an average of over 52 in that series, and you've carried that good form through here, getting top score 64 when South Africa were in trouble, 53 for. Five, uh, in Port Elizabeth, and now they weren't exactly in desperate trouble, but your 85, 87, a very good effort. Well, Hansi keeps running himself out, and I keep helping in that aspect too. Um, he's hitting the ball really, really well. You know, it's been quite amazing how low scoring, I mean, there's some really talented players on both sides, how low scoring the games have been. Maybe it's an indication of, of the good bowling or an indication of the surfaces we've been playing on. Um, but I've been enjoying what I do. Um, you know, I'm not. I haven't changed a whole lot from the England to other than the ball comes through a little bit quicker um, and a bit more bounce in the South African wicket and obviously a bit more pace from the West Indian fast bowlers. But I'm still enjoying what I'm doing and just taking one innings at a time. Are you a little more selective in your, in your shot making? I think the first two test mate, well, the first two innings that I've played um, in Johannesburg and in the first one in, uh, at St George's Park, um, I was a little bit rushed and I think a bit too keen to get off the mark and get going. Whereas in the second innings at St George's and then again um, in the first innings here, I think my, sh my shot selection was a lot more, uh, you know, not destructive because I, I just played if the ball was in the right area, I hit it, but I think it was more spot on. John T, congratulations, another wonderful performance. Trevor, thank you. It was never in doubt, South Africa convincingly cruising home by nine wickets. Kirsten and Gibbs out at 97, 57 in the first innings, and a huge impressive run chase. Gibbs played some delightful strokes, full of confidence he might be the answer now as Kirsten's opening partner. 49, Kirsten 71, Callis finishing touches 23. The bowling, Rose, well, not as effective, didn't get as much swing as in the first innings. Ambrose and Walsh, well, Walsh has a bad hamstring pull, which is a serious blow. Carl Hooper got the only wicket before.